just think of you when spring comes. Today on The DIY Designer, we are taking scarves and turning them into these killer, no sew, poncho cardigans, classic ponchos, and even a draped front vest. This insanely easy DIY is brought to you by Skillshare. Let's do it. Hey guys, happy Friday. Happy Friday. I'm so glad that you're here. I hope everybody had a beautiful week, a productive week. We get to have a little fun, a little DIY. I'm super stoked. For those of you that are new, my name is Orly Shani and this is the DIY designer. I do really great DIY fashion and sometimes home decor and I release videos every Friday and I'm so stoked you're here for today's because man, it's a good one. It's one of those like too easy for words. It's like a party trick. It's so easy. I'm really, really stoked. Uh, real quick, I'm sitting on my porch. We're doing a renovation on the porch. I don't know. I've been sitting out here trying to figure out if I should like add skylights, where the porch swing is going to go, how are we going to decorate it, should I paint the beams, should I leave them raw? Anyway, I've been obsessive, so I just figured I would do the intro out here, plus, plus the lighting's good, so let's be honest, that's my real reason. Anywho, uh, okay, so today's DIY, you guys, we are doing no sew ponchos, poncho cardigans, like draped vests, they are so easy and literally all you need is a scarf and a pair of scissors. It is so fun. Now a quick note on the scarves that are actually gonna work for this. If you're doing the poncho or you're doing the poncho cardigan, you need a blanket scarf. A regular sort of skinnier scarf's not gonna work. You can use that for the vest. I would just go to a thrift store. When I went, I found like 10 scarves. So there's plenty at your local thrift stores and they're super inexpensive. The other thing you could do is just buy fabric that has sort of that vibe of like a scarf, that kind of material that you think would be right. But again, you're gonna wanna look for goods that are wide. So when you look, it will normally say how wide it is you want to go probably at least 60 inches um, 45 is gonna be a little bit narrow you're gonna end up with more of a traditional scarf now some of you might know this and some might not but I have a podcast called momhood I co-host it with Brandy Malloy and we wrapped season one back in December and we're just gearing up for production on season two I'm really excited and one of the things that I decided to do was take a couple of courses on Skillshare about growing your podcast getting featured on new and noteworthy better audio quality now if you're watching this you're most likely a creative person the the reason I think Skillshare is so great for you is that you don't have to commit to just one thing. Like once you have your Skillshare membership, which by the way, I've got a link down below where you guys can do a free premium trial. But once you have that membership, you can kind of bounce around and just like tip your toe in courses that might pique your interest today, right? Like you don't need to buy a full course. It's like today I want to do learning about flowers. Tomorrow I want to learn photography. I want to learn final cut editing. I want to learn how to write a book proposal. And so I did this podcasting course by my friends over at Almost 30. They've got one of the biggest podcasts in the world. And so getting a course by them is amazing. So if you're thinking about starting a podcast, you're curious about it, I cannot recommend it enough. It gives you everything you need to know from like setting up your studio, what the equipment is you need, how to set it up, mic play placement, even like creating artwork for your podcast so that you actually get featured on new and noteworthy, how to get featured on new and noteworthy, like really cool little hacks. And after having done my podcast for a year, I can tell you that some of these are tips that I learned painstakingly through experience that I wish I would have seen earlier because I could have kind of hacked the process. Um, and some are things that I still haven't even thought about. So I'm really excited to implement in season two. So anyway, if you guys are interested in trying out Skillshare, which I cannot recommend enough, tap the link below. You guys will get a free premium trial. And if you miss it, because it's a limited number, if it's still under $10 a month for premium, which is access to everything as often as you want, whenever you want. Um, so I hope you guys will give it a shot. That link is down below. Uh, okay guys, let's get into this DIY because man, it is awesome. First thing you're gonna do is grab your blanket scarf and fold it in half so that it gives you as much length as possible. If it's a square, it obviously doesn't matter. Now we're gonna put in a neck hole here and because when we cut out the neck hole, it's actually gonna fall forward on our neck, we need to stagger the hem a little bit. Make the front slightly shorter than the back because once the neck hole is cut, it's gonna fall forward and it will even out. So if your neck hole is about one inch deep, make sure that you stagger it about one inch to accommodate for that. Now fold it in half to find your center or measure it, whatever you want, but I like cutting it while it's folded. 
Now you can see the neck hole is tiny. I'm cutting maybe one inch down and two inches wide. That's it. That's all I'm cutting out of this cardigan version. Now find the center of the neck hole and cut straight down. I never mark or draw anything. I just put something at the end, look at where I'm cutting, always look where you're going and you will naturally cut a straight line going where you want. Here you go. You could be done here now, like if we wanted. I was trying to decide if I wanted to cut off that little like lapel situation, but I decided that I liked that I could kind of fold it to make it look clean finished. And I knew I wanted to put belt, like a belt, uh, what should we call it? Buttonholes, sorry, so that I could actually belt it. Now, a really cool no-sew hack is using something like fray check or even fabric glue to seam up the edges so that it doesn't fray. If you are gonna use something like this, you wanna use a really thin amount. That was actually too much I did in the beginning there. A really thin amount, just enough that it kind of prevents any fraying from happening. Or if you have fabric that looks cool when it frays, let it fray. Now it's time to decide where we're gonna put the actual holes so that I can belt it properly. You wanna put it on and you wanna make sure to mark your front and your back separately because they are not in the same place. So mark it and lay it on the floor. Now, this is what we're gonna use to make them no sew buttonholes. We're actually using upholstery grommets. They click into place with your hands, no tools are necessary, two separate sides that click together. This is a really fun hack. It comes with a little guide for um, how much you need to cut out. So put the center of the guide over the center of your pin, which dictated where you wanted your little hole to go. Now, pinch the fabric and do a tiny little snip. That lets your scissors in, and now you can just cut going all the way around. You're just gonna cut going around, and if your fabric is something that stretches out a little bit, like a really loose weave, I'd actually recommend cutting it smaller so that it doesn't open up too much. Now take the grommet and put it under the back side. The part that had those little like grooves goes on the back side. Stretch the fabric over it. You hear that? That's the pop. So you stretch it over it, then you take the top, put it on top, and make sure that none of the fabric is inside. Once you're good, you just get some real good pressure against the floor, push and pop it in. Now to do the other front, you know, we did the right front, now to do the left front, it's best to just fold it in half, making sure everything is even. So right now I've got it folded so that I'm folding the front on the front, making sure that everything's even so I can just mirror the exact placement of the other one instead of taking like a million measurements. Do the same thing, cut it out, put the little one with the grooves on the bottom, then put the one with the little spoky things on the top and pop it together. Now for the back, I can't just fold it and use that as a guide. If I did that, it wouldn't work and this is why. See, that's where the front would be. Like if I did that right there, that's where I would put it. However, my pin is all the way over here. It's further down and it's further in. In order to have flattering uh, like placement of those holes for your belt, you need to make sure to actually mark them. Once you do that for the back, then you can do the same thing. Fold the backs in half so that you can mark it and then you're done. And look, it's clean finish from both sides, which is great because this one is reversible. I love it, it's such a fun hack. Now guys, this is like a 30 second version of what we just did. If you wanted to make an even easier version, you're going to fold your fabric in half and find your center. For me, that was this red piece down the middle. All I'm doing is cutting it straight open. No neck hole, no fray check, no belt loops, no nothing. Just straight up the front and fray it out. Just pull the thread so that it matches all of the edges which have that nice frayed detail. See, it just kind of pulls out super easily when you cut in a straight line. Once it gets to the end, just trim off those and wrap it over your shoulders and here you go. You can see it works perfectly. The back doesn't have the curved hem, but it still lays really nice. You could still belt it if you want, although you won't have belt loops, but I mean, dudes, 25 seconds maybe? This is the ultimate party trick. Okay, now we're gonna do the poncho versions. So there's two ways. If you want this kind of triangular poncho shape, what you're gonna do is fold it in half and this is where your neck hole would go. You would fold it into a triangle, and you would apply it there. If you want this more straight across version, you'd fold it in half, not on a triangle, and that's where it would go. So see, that would be like this. The neck hole would go there in the center. If I wanted it on an angle, it would go there. I was laying them on my body to decide, and ultimately I decided to go with the more classic, like triangular version. So I'm folding it in half, and again, because I have a neck hole, I'm staggering the front a little shorter than the back to accommodate for that uh, amount that I'm cutting found my center and I'm just cutting it out again. You could fold it in half to cut it at the same time if you want. I wanted to do a little bit of a V-neck. So I found the center of that opening and I just cut straight down about two inches. Now I'm gonna cut out that excess so that it becomes a V. 
So what's on the right is the back of my neck hole, and what I'm cutting right now is the V-neck so that when it opens up, I've got a rounded neck hole in the back, just like you see, and a little V-neck in the front. Now I'm just intentionally fraying it a little bit. Anytime you're fraying it on the angle, it's not gonna do as well as that red one I just did, but keep working and you'll get it done. Now to do this vest one, you're going to measure a vest or a jacket that fits you right and measure how far apart those armholes are. For me, that was about 14 inches. So I'm taking my scarf, folding it in half, and I'm measuring my armhole at seven inches. Because again, it's folded in half, so when it opens, it will end up at 14. So what I'm gonna do is put my armhole right here. Again, I pinch my fabric to make a little cut, and then I can cut straight down. Now to start off, I'm just doing these really shallow, tiny armholes. And I recommend doing that because some uh, fabrics are like, they're like really stretchy. And once you cut them, they open a lot more than you thought. So what I did is I cut one side and then I just cut through it so that I could do both. After trying it on, it was like way too small. I couldn't even get my arm in. This particular fabric doesn't stretch that much. So I cut it out open, but I still had like a little more right there that kind of needed to be like scooped out. So all I did was pin where I wanted it to end. That's kind of where I want it to be cut. So I put a pin in the left, put a pin in the right, and then lay it down. And you can see there's the pin. So what I'm gonna do is I'm starting at my armhole, like starting at zero, going all the way out to my pin and going back down to zero so that it just adjusts the shape of that inner armhole and not the outer armhole. Now, at this point, you can either use fray check, let it fray, do whatever you want to seam it up, but we're done, you guys. Okay, that's it. I'm gonna model them for you and show you how they look on. They are so easy. I cannot wait for you guys to try this. If you do this one, will you please do me a favor and tag me on social? I'm at Orly Shani on Instagram. Uh, tag me in a photo of you wearing it because I would love to see what you guys end up making um, and I will reshare it. So it would make me very, very happy. All right, you guys, uh, enjoy the fashion show and have a beautiful week. I'll see you guys next week. It's like the heat on my skin takes me by to the time Met you on a Friday Halfway out at the door of the club Playing so long the weekends Stayed in bed till Wednesday Fell in love with you right there and then I was young, couldn't see that <laughs> Thank you.